and this talk is uh, by Heather Lee, uh, and she will be speaking about homological neurosymmetry for pain Thank you. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming. Uh, so, this is a joint project with uh, Adam, Neto, and Liu. So, for this project, regarding the two sides of neurosymmetry, we're going to have the complex side, the theta divisors in principally polarized abelian variety. And we'll be considering the category of coherent sheaves on that. And then the synthetic side will be a Landau Ginsburg model with a toric collapse uh, manifold and the super potential. And we'll, we'll be considering the category of the kind of side of category of that. Um, so uh, in this talk, we'll first start by talking about the complex multiply. And then we'll talk about uh, how that corresponds under mirror symmetry to the Taylor moduli of the uh, mirror. And then in the end, we'll talk more about the categorical aspect of homological mirror symmetry. Um, uh, maybe I should point out that we're writing more than one paper. So the first paper um, <laughs> is going to be just on theta divisors in complex two dimensional abelian variety. Uh, those are genus two curves. And then um, the, the later paper will be on uh, for arbitrary dimensions. The first paper is uh, pretty much written. We were really hoping to post it before this talk, but uh, uh, we didn't have finished. Sorry. So um, but hope, uh, still got some stuff to clean up. So hopefully it will be posted soon. Uh, the second part is um, uh, paper is uh, more in progress. So, uh, OK. So um, let's begin by reviewing uh, the like multiply of theta divisors in principally polarized abelian variety, sometimes I'll abbreviate it as a PPMD. So most of this stuff are very classical. So let's begin by taking a tau in the ego upper half space of dimension G. So this uh, generalizes the dimension one case where it's, it's just the upper half length of the complex length. So in dimension G, tau will be a G by G symmetric complex matrix. Um, with the real part and the imaginary part denoted by B and omega, respectively, uh, with the omega being a positive definite matrix. So this is the space of um, principally polarized opinion varieties with toroidal structure. We'll talk a bit more about that uh, later. Uh, so for now, let's take such a tau, and that defines for us a opinion variety of uh, tau of dimension G, just in um, um and this uh it's okay um so um so yeah you can just define it in this way to have uh, uh, the quotient of CR G uh by the multiplicative action of this uh, tau C G in this way and sometimes uh, it's uh it's also useful to think in terms of this B plus the additive of medium variety so which is just this lattice uh C G quotient by this lattice C G plus tau dg, the additive action of this group, and they are related by the exponential. Okay, so on this toric variety, um, uh, we, uh, on this abelian variety, v tau, we can define a land bundle in such a way. Um, uh, we can define a land bundle in such a way. Uh, in fact, for a generic tau, uh, this is um, the Picard rank is one. This is the only land bundle. The other ones are constellations of this one. Um, so, um, uh, so the space of sections of this land bundle has dimension one, and everything is generated by uh, a section defined by this Riemann theta function. The way this is written here, given a particular tau. This Riemann theta function, um, theta tau, uh, is a function defined from uh, C star G to C, and uh, it's written in this infinite sum, like a Fourier series. And this function is partly periodic um, with respect to the action of tau C G. So it descends to a section on the medium variety C tau. And now the zero side of this uh, section. Um, is uh, the theta divisor. So the Riemann theta function is the defining function for this. And the case when dimension G equals two 
uh, this uh, theta child, the theta divisor is a genus two curve. Now, uh, the first charm class of uh, this slam bundle is a positive integral anti-symmetric two form, and it in fact defines a Taylor class on this uh, abelian variety Z tau. And uh, this this Taylor class is uh, known as uh, the polarization. And uh, given that um, there there exists a integral symplectic basis. Uh, alpha beta such that the cup product of the stew uh, gives us this uh, um, C1 of L tau. So, um, so this, is, this is known as the principal polarization um, because uh, uh, this uh, a chaotic form can be written in this way. So, I use uh, two color arrows what it means to be not the principal polarization with uh, this, the delta stuff there. So um, this this uh, general polarization uh, is not related to this topic that can come up because the way our opinion variety is defined in this way, uh, it is principally polarized. The choice of how gives us a principal polarization, which is the choice of this integral synthetic basis. Um, so I pointed point out the general polarization there before comparison. Um, also, maybe an uh, interesting project um, for future, like maybe some general divisor in um, non-principally polarized anyway. So, okay, so. Um, but then if you have more than one section, then that's Oh, yeah, yeah. So definitely we haven't thought anything about that. <laughs> just just so we are in the drug session and say the devices. So, um, so yeah, so we have this ego space, which is the modulized state of principally polarized a billion variety with Corelli structure, which is the choice of the symplectic basis. Not forgetting this uh, Corelli structure gets us uh, this AG, which is uh, this pair we call along with this uh, polarization, which uh, so that's the state of PPAVs. So to get from HG to AG, we uh, do a caution by the um, action of the integral symplectic group. Uh, which is uh, I mean, just more than the action is defined like this. So, um, yeah, some weird choice of the, the A, C, E, D. I'm trying to avoid using the letter B, you can take it already. Anyways, so, um, okay, so now we have defined this V tau, which is the uh, abelian variety, as the quotient from. C star G um, to V tau, and we define the theta divisor in V tau. And we can also think about this V tau Hilda, which is simply uh, the zero section of the Riemann theta function as defined from the domain C star G. So that's a, uh, this is the infinite sum, so it's going to define an infinite type hypersurface in the C star G. And so in this diagram, and now from C star G to R G, we have a S Y Z separation given by this log norm map. And correspondingly, we get the S Y Z separation from V tau uh, to R G quotient by omega C G. Note that the phase of this S Y Z separation only depends on omega, which is the imaginary R G. And here I'm denoting the inclusion of the, the fiber as the uh, yeah. PN. So here we have uh, two modulized spaces. One is this ego space, remembering the uh, uh, structure. Uh, it's uh, just a space of PPA means AG, forgetting the Torelli structure. And I can be uh, uh, motivated by this as well as deep vibration. Um, there, there's actually kind of a uh, interesting modulized space in between, um, which is, uh, I'm gonna end up, uh, Defining this AG uh, upper F, um, which is uh, this uh, single space quotient by this group of uh, GG, um, which is the modulized space of, uh, I forgot the word, principally polarized uh, of the variety, but with the S by Z population. So we are, um, <coughs> so observe that there is a group, um, big GG. That's a subgroup of the synthetic, the integral synthetic group 
that um, that uh, that actually uh, gives you a choice of this uh, X Y Z calculation. So um, so if instead uh, instead of quotienting by the entire integral synthetic group, we just quotient by the uh, GG, then um, we we don't forget the entire Borelli structure. We we still remember this X Y Z calculation. So what is the GG is uh, is uh, defined above as the uh, the subgroup of the integral synthetic group, but the lower left corner is zero. So uh, writing that out, you can see uh, there's another way to write it. Uh, basically, this uh, GG is going to be uh, the subgroup of the synthetic group that preserves um, this uh, uh, first homology group of the fiber. So the uh, so if you uh, so we have this choice of the integral synthetic basis alpha beta so the sum uh, of alpha uh, uh, is this uh, the fiber a <laughs> subgroup inside this uh, H one tau so uh, this GG preserves um, uh, this fiber so um, and now uh, looking more closely, we can see that this GG is generated by the following two subgroups. One is uh, this uh, uh, diagonal uh, group, A, A transpose inverse, where A is uh, in the uh, GL, GC. Uh, so uh, according to how the synthetic uh, acts on tau, we see that uh, this, uh, this G L G C acts on tau in this way. Tau goes to a tau a inverse a transpose, and then uh, the other uh, group that's generating this G is the group of symmetric matrices, um, which is this uh, of this form uh, with identity on the diagonal block, and then there's a on the upper corner there's a symmetric matrix C. So that um, just translates tau. So you can see that this uh, the second group uh, tau goes to tau plus c, and c is a real matrix. That part only changes the real part, and this uh, imaginary part of tau alone. And then the uh, the first group uh, it transforms the imaginary part of tau just by a imaginary part of tau a. So so that's how uh, those will transform, and I know the interesting fact is that the entire um, symplectic integral symplectic group is actually generated by this GG and uh, plus this one matrix, um, which is the inversion. So um, probably most of you are familiar with the G equals to one case. Uh, when G, G is equal to one, this GL1, the action is actually the density. So this GG is simply a translation. And then there is a, the translation and the inversion that gives you the entire SP. Um, so, quotienting uh, by this action, uh, we can define this uh, moduli of principally polarized uh, abelian variety for the number in the SP evolution. So, uh, to summarize, so we have this community diagrams of uh, a lot of the different moduli spaces that we we just talked about. So up there we have the uh, uh, single space, which is the space of tau's, and uh, that has the which is of the form B plus I omega. B uh, they're both symmetric matrix, and then omega uh, is also positive definite. And then uh, so if you just take the space of such omegas, uh, that's actually uh, some people the the people that I listed there they have their papers written. To study this modular space, there is known as the pure tropical Siegel space. And uh, so there, um, so, so yeah, so and then, um, yeah, so then if we uh, quotient now uh, the HG by the just the integral symmetric group, um, we get uh, this, um, the, the modular space on the second row. Um, and going to the pure tropical single space as well. And then down a further level, we get to this um, principally polarized and XYZ fibered um, moduli space, HG quotient by PG. 
and then that uh, that has a map over to this modular space of uh, pure topical, uh, principally polarized abelian varieties, just by taking uh, S1D fiber EBAB to a space and GRGZ uh, after that. And then, and then further down, we have just the modular space of EBAB, portion of the entire um, symplectic uh, group. So, um, so how do those this moduli spaces correspond to the Taylor moduli of the mirror? Um, so, um, yeah. So here I, I haven't talked about what the mirror is yet, but I just want to kind of have this slide so you you see like a kind of an outlook what's going to happen. So, uh, in fact, uh, this pure tropical Siegel space, which is the space of all omegas. Um, the imaginary part of how it's going to correspond um, to, oh, I can mention the mirror is a lambda of Ginsburg model with the Corey Calabria minus for Y and the superpotential. And now this uh, pure tropical legal space corresponds to the Taylor space of Y, space of all Taylor classes. And then uh, this modular space is uh, quotient by the uh, G dimension, uh, G by G symmetric matrices that uh, and then cross this um, a tropical legal space gives us a complexified Taylor space of Y. And then this tropical um, moduli of pure tropical PPAVs, uh, which is quotient by the, the, the automorphism, the GF, um, GP action, uh, give us the Taylor moduli of Y. And then this uh, this S1D fiber DBAV um, AGF gives us the complexified Taylor moduli of Y. And then in the uh, special case when dimension G equals to two, uh, we're talking about theta divisors in two dimensional medium variety. So genus supers, there the mirror in this construction Y has a complex dimension three, and then um, so the Taylor cones actually correspond to something. Um, so the, the Taylor moduli is not going to be single Taylor cone. It's going to be a decomposition of many, many different Taylor cones glued together. And then that actually corresponds to something from the very decomposition. Um, uh, so, so I'm going to talk about uh, all this and make more sense later, but just kind of outlook for um, what's coming. So, so, oh, actually, I forgot to mention. Uh, yeah, I just found Yingli here. Yeah, this uh, this this matrix the uh, uh, the inversion was studied for the right studied in the species. So um, now let's talk about what is actually uh, the construction of this mirror uh, land of Ginsburg model. So I'm going to uh, follow uh, this work by. Uh, as I said, I was a so I think many other people before them have constructed this mirror, but they studied the uh, uh, S5D mirror symmetry for them, and I'm familiar with the work, I'm just going to study that. And then, um, so they studied hypersurfaces in B star N, and then uh, in, in that paper, there is a, a section at the end that mentions like the idea of side that uh, for divisors in a BDM variety, you can uh, first uh, construct a Landau Ginsburg model for hypersurface um, in C star N, and then you get uh, you caution that, and then get the um, Landau Ginsburg model for this divisor in the BDM variety. So uh, I'm going to go through that. So uh, what we'll do is to first construct this Landau Ginsburg model Y tilde uh, with the superpotential V naught tilde. That's the mirror to this uh, theta tilde. So remember, theta tilde is uh, is kind of here. Is the <coughs> defined by this uh, Riemann theta function as a function with the domain um, C star G. So it's going to be an infinite type of hypersurface in C star G, and let me talk a little bit about the dimensional state. So, uh, so theta divisor 
in a complex G dimensional abelian variety, the theta divisor has complex dimension G minus one. And then in this construction, the manifold Y is going to have complex dimension G plus one, so it's two complex dimensions higher. So what's going on in this uh, <coughs> construction is uh, in the study of SYZ mirror symmetry, instead of having a Lagrangian torus vibration on theta, they look at a equivalent space, which is this blob of V cross C along with theta cross zero, which is two complex dimensions higher. And on that, there's a good Lagrangian torus vibration that do SYZ mirror symmetry. So I'm not going to go into that in this talk. I'll just uh, say what is the construction of this mirror is. Uh, some of you are familiar with this. So the mirror, uh, so this uh, flat tilde is going to be a uh, G plus one complex dimensional uh, manifold, a uh, Calabria manifold. And uh, to describe that, it's a toric. And so to describe that, we can uh, talk about the moment polyhedron, uh, which is going to be a G plus one dimensional polyhedron. Um, so uh, a good way to think about that is to think about the G-dimensional plane uh, with coordinate C, um, this great C, and then uh, this moment polyhedron will look like a bow above this RG plane. And the facets of the polyhedrons are going to be like kind of the, the, this ball. And then the interior of the polyhedron is in the, like if you, if you feel the ball is water, it's in the uh, <laughs> feeling of the ball, I'm say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's going to be infinite, yeah. So infinite many factors. Yeah, so, uh, so how to think of this is, okay, we look at this G-dimensional plane with coordinate C, and then you look at, uh, you introduce another coordinate eta above it, and then eta is going to sit above, this t swap linear function B of C, which is known as the tropicalization. So what it is is the Legendre transform of this function kappa. So the kappa depends on omega, which is the imaginary part of tau C. Only the imaginary part of tau defines for us this uh, this manifold y. So so what is the what is B is is the maximum of the infinite set of linear functions. As many linear functions as the number of terms in the theta function. So what happens is uh, remember that uh, this this c is equal to uh, two times p e to the two times c is the norm of x. So if you look at the theta function and the, the norm of each term, so write the norm of x is e to the two times c, and you look at the exponent of c of uh, of the exponential. Uh, those exponents are the terms in this uh, set. So, uh, so in this uh, RG plan, you can there are different components. Um, uh, this is B of C is piecewise linear, so there are different uh, polygonal components. On um, each component, one of the set in this, uh, uh, in this in this one of the terms in this maximum in this set is the maximum. Uh, when on that component such that that term is the maximum, that means uh, the corresponding term in the theta function is the dominating monomial among all the other sums. So um, that's kind of uh, it's, it's quite fast. You've never seen this before, but just know that there are as many terms, infinitely many terms, as many as the number of terms in the theta function. And so what is defined is kind of a, a geometrically, it looks like this ball sitting above the RG plane, this, this uh, G plus one dimensional polyhedron, there are infinite many facets. Um, uh, one, uh, each one of the facets is given by uh, a term uh, in the middle of the function. So the, the, the facets I see this is third? Uh, yeah, yeah, so for example, like the G, um, there's a G. Uh, so, yeah, G equals two, there are hexagons. So, yeah, it's a, yeah, we'll do a G equals two example. I'll give you a teacher. So, uh, yeah, in G equals two, they, they look like a, a, a towering of a bunch of hexagons. Yeah, you, you have to work it out. <laughs> so, yeah, this. So, um, 
but uh, uh, each each vertex is uh, connected to G plus one address. Okay, so so this is a moment on the um, uh, So so with this, we have a boring manifold, and that uh, so then we can uh, define the Taylor structure. This is a wide field. So the Taylor structure has both the complex structure and the symplastic structure. So with the complex structure, um, so that um, we can describe it by relating the complex board coordinates, uh, which is P in this uh, uh, the open torus, uh, P star uh, to the G plus one, and how relate that to the um, coordinate in each uh, uh, chart. So each vertex uh, of this uh, moment polyhedron is uh, at the intersection of G plus one facet. And uh, in Boric geometry, this vertex corresponds to a CG plus one chart. And on that CG plus one chart, we can look at the homogeneous coordinates. And then uh, the homogeneous coordinates, Y, uh, are related to this uh, complex boarding coordinate in this way that defines the complex structure. Um, and uh, um, that's invariant and there against the uh, uh, torus action C star G plus one. And uh, so and then and we can also define a synthetic structure uh, that's uh, invariant under the compact torus and the new one. Uh, uh, sorry, I wrote Q because I was thinking dimension two. It's attributed to the U one G plus one. Sorry, U one G plus one. Yeah. So the synthetic structure, um, the way to construct it, um. It, uh, we, we're just going to follow uh, the work of Bulliman and Kanazawa Law. So Bulliman's work is to construct the synthetic structure uh, when the torus variety is uh, finite. In this case, it's a little different; it's infinite. So that's uh, uh, that that was constructed in the work on the Zawa Law, just by adding this uh, function pi, um, which is some characteristic function. So. Um, the way that Bulliman constructed synthetic structure is to first have a dual Taylor potential, which is just uh, the sum of uh, this function L log L. So remember L, each L is the defining function of a facet. So I'm writing in the action angle coordinate of that, are, that lives on this moment polyhedron. So, and then because we have this infinite uh, toric, um, type toric variety, so um, we needed this uh, function chi. What this is, is uh, you take a covering of all the facets. So each cover, each open set is a cover will cover one facet only. So you will cover the entire facet, but it's going to be a little bigger than one. That you'll cover all the adjacent facets partially, but they won't touch any of the non adjacent facets. So we're going to have a covering of all these facets. And then um, what this function chi is that it's going to be exactly one on that cover, and then you kind of size off where it's going to be. So, um, so if you just do that, that's going to give you a dual color potential. And then uh, the, the actual Taylor potential uh, is the Legendre transform of the dual Taylor, a dual potential. That's going to be a function of this uh, uh, this variable rho, which is the uh, CGDC. So here, um, sorry, it's a little messy. So lots of variables. Uh, the, uh, we have variables C eta that lives in R G plus one. So the very last coordinate I've been calling is eta, but in this particular formula. I just like C G plus one B eta. And then uh, in this coordinate rho and theta, the complex boring coordinate P is e to the two pi rho plus i theta. And then the Taylor form um, is going to be the uh, C C slash D theta, the action of rho coordinate. And then um, so and then uh, yeah, so. You can also write it in terms of the row and theta in, um, and with this uh, question of G. So there, there's a lot of formulas, but <laughs> the point is that we do have a, a synthetic structure defined on Y tilde that's invariant under the compact force E1.
And then we have a super potential um, defined on this white tilde to see that the environment under this uh, subflorus of C star G is at the C star B plus one. And what is the super potential is it's going to be a holomorphic function expanding uh, this last um, complex torus coordinate, which on each CG plus one chart is just going to be the product of all the coordinates. Uh, so what is this, this is doing is that it's going to be a holomorphic function that vanishes uh, to order one on each of the four divisors. So um, this is a holomorphic function, and it's also at the same time a synthetic vibration, which is kind of a synthetic structure um, with uh, smooth fibers everywhere, but there's a singular fiber above zero, and uh, the uh, Free image of this, the singular fiber is the union of all the foreign devices that corresponds to uh, all the facets of this uh, polyhedron. And so far, everything that is defined, the complex structure, synthetic structure, and the super potential only depends on the imaginary part of tau. And the real part of tau is going to define for us the B field. Uh, so so the real part of tau um, determines, uh, is going to give us this uh, two form on this white tilde via this injective map. There's a, this, this inclusion of the fiber to Y pulled back is actually an injective map. So, um, so this B, um, uh, the real part of tau gives the two form on the fiber. So the fibers are actually just uh, R2G. So, um, and then so, that's defined the two form and pulling back gives us a, a form um, that corresponds to um, a form on white, two form on white, a class um, on, on white tilde. And then we can choose a, again, U1 to the G plus one is better in um, one one form. Eta. So that's a B field. So um, I'm writing, there, yeah, there's a lot of different coordinates, I'm sorry. So this, this R coordinate um, is the omega inverse of C. So, um, okay, so what, what we've done here is we define uh, this Y tilde um, and the super potential uh, V naught tilde that's the mirror to this uh, infinite path uh, uh, theta divisor, uh, theta tilde. And uh, now, uh, we just need to caution that by the tau dg action to actually get the um, Landau-Ginsburg model yv uh, that's near to this uh, theta tau. So uh, this is the uh, tau dg action that's right at the top. You can see that uh, I'll firstly preserve the complex structure because it actually preserves the plan of the corridor. So it preserves the complex structure and it preserves the we now tilde. We now tilde is the extension of the very last term. There's nothing I think on that. And then it also going to preserve the the Taylor and the Taylor class and the B field. So and and this action is free in the frame image of the open unit disk. So any uh, any disk that on the frame image of any disk smaller than the unit disk, uh, we can caution that. So basically, we have this. Uh, um, y tilde, which is the like infinite attack manifold, uh, that's the symplectic vibration um, with a singular fiber above zero. And we're going to take a, a small neighbor of the singular fiber. And then we're going to caution that by the tau dg action to get this y. So, so long as we take a small neighborhood of the singular fiber quotient, we are going to get a good complex structure on the fly. And um, in fact, we, we don't have to take a super small neighborhood. We just take a neighborhood above the open disk to get the complex structure on Y and also the super potential on Y. But we need a smaller neighborhood in order to define the Taylor structure, the B on uh, Y. So, yeah, so, so in some way, there's, uh, there's a lot of formulas. Basically, we first construct this y tilde, v tilde, that's, that's mirror to this uh, theta tilde, and then we portion by the tau dg action to get the Landau Ginsburg model y and v naught 
um, that's near to the theta divisor. So, so now there here is a picture when g is equal to two. Uh, when g is equal to two, the theta divisor is the genus two curve. And, and the mirror uh, is going to be a complex uh, three dimensional manifold. So this y is a complex three dimensional manifold and it can be a threefold. And that's a symplectic vibration over the C. And then all the generic fibers are going to be T2G. So in this case, it's T4. That's all the generic fibers. And the singular fiber. Uh, in this case, it's going to be the blow up of CP2 uh, at three point quotient by this uh, tau C2. Uh, so, why is that? Is, uh, is earlier there was a question what the, what is the, the how it even looks like? It looks like uh, the, the boundary of the top. All the facets look like hexagons. So, so, you get for this y tilde, you get this the infinite hexagon. The moment polytope of y tilde. The all the facets are this uh, polygon, so you get infinitely many of them. Uh, but after you quotient by this tau CG action, the, the two two side, uh, the opposite sides of the polygon identify. That's how this quotient works. And so the so the hexagon is like a, a blow, the moment polytope for a CP two blow up a three points, and then you quotient. Uh, then you get a singular fiber. So one thing to note is that uh, um, so this is two complex dimensions above this uh, theta divisor. But what's really important here is the critical locus of this uh, vibration. The critical locus, um, the moment polytope of the critical locus is the boundary of this hexagon. The, so so written uh, drawing in blue color. So you can see that uh, the hexagon has six sides, but the opposite sides are identified. So there are really three sides, and each one of them is a sphere. So you get this banana, we call the banana configuration of three spheres. And in fact, uh, the Keller moduli um, has three dimensions. Um, so, um, so, so it has three dimensions. You can see that as we vary the synthetic area of each one of the three spheres, we get a three parameter family of Kelly moduli of this mirror. So, um, so in, in Catherine Tomato's thesis, she actually studied this the homological mirror symmetry for this example, but with all the, the synthetic area of the three spheres being equal. So now we we are going to study homological mirror symmetry while varying this uh, uh, the, the synthetic uh, structure. So, so, but the thing is, uh, if you just vary the synthetic area of the three spheres, you get a three parameter family of Taylor moduli, but it doesn't actually cover the entire Taylor moduli space because of this phenomenon of the TS law. So, um, you can vary. So, so here in this picture, if you choose the, uh, so remember the imaginary part of tau determines this moment polyhedron. So if you choose the imaginary part of, of tau, this omega, that satisfies this criterion, then um, you work through this uh, calculation, you'll see that the facets look like uh, hexagons that are looking like this. And then in the dotted line, I'm going a fundamental domain and after the quotient. So, uh, so here, so the omega is going to determine what the lengths of each of the three sides are, and the length of the hexagon, uh, the edge of the hexagon, uh, determines the is the synthetic area of the uh, three spheres of the critical locus. So, uh, so as we vary the synthetic area, we get a three parameter family. But at some point, we can see that. We can actually shrink this a one to zero. Then we reach this degenerate case in the middle, and then we can go into a, another chamber or like another Taylor cone. So another chamber in the Taylor uh, moduli space, where um, in, in this dimension two can we still get hexagons, but but it's, it's kind of a different configuration. So uh, so here. 
Um, more explicitly, in this example, we can see we take omega to be of this form one plus lambda, lambda, and then that's in chamber one, lambda is greater than zero. So that's when A1, uh, the length of A1 is uh, lambda, and as we shrink that lambda, we reach uh, chamber two and we get um, the corresponding area. So, um, <coughs> so we have all these chambers. So we said that the Taylor modulus space uh, has different chambers. So in fact, there are infinitely many chambers. So if we take uh, the space of omegas, and you can see that by taking omega and write it uh, in terms in this form, uh, write that matrix as the z plus y x x and z minus y. If you write it in that form, you can see that. Uh, <laughs> Omega being positive definite, um, if and only if x, y, and z satisfy z greater than the square root of x squared plus y squared, which means x, y, z lives in a call that I drew on the right. So um, that cone is the Taylor modulus space. And to uh, describe these chambers better, I'm going to take a slice of the cone. So it's a, a slice of the cone is just a circle. So um, a disk. So um, the purple disk I'm calling C prime. So this is the disk uh, over there. So now this here, this, this disk I'm going is a slice of this Taylor modulus space. So the Taylor modulus space is a cone over this disk. And then uh, this chamber one with omega satisfying those criterion uh, actually looks like this triangle over, uh, over this uh, um, that's part of this disk. And uh, and then chamber two is the other uh, triangle. So uh, the Taylor cone is actually a cone over this triangle. So now going between chamber one and chamber two involves shrinking this A one. But we can also shrink, say, A2 or A3, and then we can go to the other chambers. In fact, there are infinitely many chambers. Here I'm only drawing seven, but in fact, there are infinitely many. They, they give you like a kind of a triangulation of this disk. That's the, all the kind of cones. Uh, so the case that uh, studied in Catherine Canadian's thesis. Uh, is uh, corresponds to a point um, one half zero in this disk. And in the Keller modulus space, there's a, a cone over this point, which, which is a ray uh, in that cone. So, uh, and in fact, in this dimension, all the Keller cones are related by the GL2P action. So, all the chambers are in the same GL2P orbit. So, the GL2P is the same as. The GLCC that we talked about earlier here. But in higher dimensions, they're not going to be all in the same orbit. So, uh, so somehow this picture uh, is in the literature a lot. It, it actually corresponds to the same, uh, it's actually exactly the same as variable decomposition, uh, which was discovered in 1908. I think he had a very different motivation in mind. But, so, there, there's some abstract definition uh, with admissible decomposition of this tropical single space. And um, in each dimension, there are three different types of uh, admissible decomposition. So in this dimension, all three are the same. That's known as a very good decomposition. I think I was looking at the definition. I couldn't quite make sense of what they were doing. It's a very abstract definition, but it uh, turns out the same as what um, we're doing here. <laughs> so um, uh, in this dimension. Um, okay, so uh, on the very end, let, let me just uh, uh, close up by talking about um, the categorical aspect of homological mirror symmetry. So here, so we talk about uh, the complex moduli, and, and then we talk about how they correspond to the Taylor moduli of the mirror. And now let's uh, uh, talk a little bit about the categorical aspect of homological mirror symmetry. So here we have data divisors. Uh, in uh, the abelian variety V tau. So um, now uh, then that gives us a functor uh, from 
the category of coherent sheets, I mean, because of the category of coherent sheets of the data divisor, just by taking a line bundle and restricting it to the data divisor. That's the arrow at the top. And then the left hand side arrow is just the homology community for abelian varieties. In the G equals one case, the elliptic curve that's done by Polish Chef Daslow. And then the arbitrary dimension case is done by Pukaya. And then the bottom one, uh, so is by, so that map is the cup map uh, that's talked about in the recent work of a rule, uh, update a rule that you take a uh, Lagrangian in the um, abelian variety and then you parallel transport it along a, I'm going to talk about it in the next slide. Uh, along a U-shaped curve in the base, and then you get a Lagrangian in the total space of this uh, vibration. And that gives a, so that, that's a map from the Lagrangians in the Pukaya category of the medium variety to a Lagrangian in the Pukaya central category of the, the mirror superposition, uh, mirror um, like model. And then the, the right vertical axis is yeah, the mere symmetry statement um, between the coherent shift and the theta divisor and the higher theta category of this Sandal Ginsburg mirror. And Canendo's thesis proved it for a particular family of tau. And then we're doing it for all tau in the moduli space. Um, I feel like I'm running out of time. I'm sorry. You have like 20 minutes. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so, um, oh, I'll, I'll go back. So, um, so yeah, this, this is just a quick uh, overview of the left hand side. Left hand side is just the homological mirror symmetry for a BDM varieties. So, uh, so remember that this Y, um, this Y is a synthetic vibration, whereas the generic fiber being a BDM varieties, how about T2G? So the are varieties. And so um, so on the fiber, so here um, those coordinates are the action angle coordinates um, y. So on the fiber, um, eta is a function of c, and the theta eta is constant. So it's just the on the fiber, we can just have the, uh, the c and the theta coordinates. And then the, uh, you can write a synthetic form, just a D, C, D, theta, like that. And then you can also use this so coordinate R, and then, um, yeah, D equals to omega R. So then, um, so then there, there's this correspondence, the complex side and the mirror synthetic side. We have the complex side being this uh, CG quotient by the lattice, the medium variety. And then the synthetic side, if you write it in the R theta coordinate, it's simply R2G function by C2G. And then uh, we have a complex parameter tau equals to B plus I omega. And then we have the, uh, the synthetic parameter being the, this uh, complexified synthetic form, which is B plus I omega at the R and theta. And then um, for generic tau, all the land bundles are be uh, uh, just translations of this uh, land bundle I talked about in the beginning. So this is the funny way of writing the translation by uh, the Z of this model. I talked about it in the beginning. So the land bundle corresponds to uh, Lagrangians uh, in this uh, mirror torus. So uh, so this, uh, this little L is the, uh, so, so each line bundle, um, LK translated by Z, Z is the A plus tau B corresponds to a linear Lagrangian with the slope minus K uh, and intercept, say the intercept B and with a, um, uh, this U1 connection. So this uh, epsilon A is the a trivial line bundle uh, on this uh, Lagrangian with a flat human connection um, uh, that's uh, 
d minus 2 pi a d bar. So, um, I'm rushing. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, this is basically, I think uh, most people are familiar with uh, this is a elliptic curve case where uh, Lagrangian uh, L to the K, uh, the K power of the sample land bundle corresponds to like a linear Lagrangian with log minus K. And now for the chi and sample category, um, actually we're not doing the entire chi and sample category, we're just in the condensed thesis setting. We're just doing the category generated by this set of objects. So this set of objects are, uh, you take the linear Lagrangian above a small negative number. So above this minus epsilon, you get a, 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 a torus uh, T2G. And then in that torus, you take a linear Lagrangian. Uh, yeah, defined kind of in this way. And then you parallel transport it along this U shaped curve in the base. So here the U shaped curve is this curve in green. They actually kind of look like a V shaped curve. So um, yeah, U shaped curve in the base. And then so that uh, you take a Lagrangian the fiber and you do parallel transport of that Lagrangian along this U shaped curve and you swap out a Lagrangian in the total space of this uh, synthetic vibration. And then you equip that uh, with a, 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 a this U1 connection with curvature equal to minus two pi i b um, restricted to this Lagrangian. So that, that's going to be the generating object of this uh, category. So um, yeah, so yeah, and the morphisms. Uh, so um, so yeah, so 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 that's a so 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 yeah, so all the land bundles are going to correspond to uh, this generating object. And then the, we talk about the morphisms in this entire set of category. We perturb this uh, U shape of the in the base just by a little bit, uh, shifting this uh, green U shape curve to the red one, and then look at the uh, the intersection with the the earlier Lagrangian. And then we can see that, um, and then we, we count the holomorphic disk there. And then we can uh, see that, uh, see this two U shaped curve intersect at, at two different points. One is above this minus epsilon, and the other is this right, mode, right hand side intersection point. And this right hand side in, intersection point is actually uh, the inner, so on the right hand side is the intersection between. Just two Lagrangians in the fiber, and the right hand side is the between kind of the the monodromy of one of the Lagrangians with the second one. So, and then um, you can actually show that the monodromy of the Lagrangian in the fiber along the boundary of this uh, is Hamiltonian isotopic uh, to L k plus one. So then. Um, um, yeah, I just, I'm sorry, I just feel like I'm Yeah, so, so what happens is that if you look at the morphism between two Lagrangians in the total space, uh, it's going to be this direct sum of, um, of, uh, like something that sits above the right hand side intersection point, uh, and then the, the right hand above these two fibers. It's going to be the, the morphism above these two fibers quotient by this uh, uh, differential. And then you can do a calculation and see that this differential is uh, equal to the theta function actually um, up to some scaling factor. So what we are going to have is that um, uh, this mirror symmetry statement that uh, in the above, we have all the hounds of land bundles uh, in the coherent uh, category of coherent shifts of the theta divisor. And then uh, in the bottom row, we have uh, um, uh, the first two are morphisms uh, in the fiber. And then the, the next one is like a, is a morphism in the total space. And you can see that, uh, so this, uh, 
this is the exact sequence because the morphism in the total space is seen as like um, uh, in this way as a magic homosis. So uh, yeah, and uh, because because this differential is just theta up to a scaling factor, uh, the first square of this diagram commutes. So then the third arrow is the isomorphism. So we can see that the um, the how uh, for on the between the lamp bundles and the theta divisor corresponds to the morphisms uh, in the onion. 